Alrighty guys, another episode of Shellonomics. I am here with Brian from the Unmatched team for his Kickstarter project. Uh, Brian, first off, congratulations on getting the goal complete in less than one hour. So I saw this randomly just looking up turtle stuff on Kickstarter, and this caught my eye. I'm a, I'm a board gamer myself, and to see a turtle franchise get mixed into this Unmatched brand uh, is very exciting to me. So can you explain how the origin of Unmatched came about, like the style of gameplay? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the uh, company that publishes Unmatched, the company that I work for, is called Restoration Games. Uh, and sort of our our thing in the board game industry is we take uh, games that are out of print um, and we bring them up to modern standards. We put a new coat of paint on them. We you know do all of the sort of under the hood stuff to modernize them, um, and then we re-release them. So Unmatched is actually based on a game that came out in the early 2000s called Unma or called uh, Star Wars Epic Duels. Um, and uh, it was a game that uh, Rob, one of the founders of our company, worked on. And um, he wanted to bring it back. Uh, and we released it about five years ago now uh, as Battle of Legends Volume 1. Uh, that was our first set. Um, and it was successful enough that we got to sort of do a second set. And then we got a second set after that. And we've sort of kept on going since then. Um, and you know, it's been a, it's been a real joy to work on. Seems like a fantastic style of play as well. So what yeah. made Unmatched consider, uh, the turtles and what was your first, uh, origin with Ninja Turtles? I'm pretty sure you're a passionate turtle guy if you wanted to bring turtles <laughs> on match. So let's hear how turtles entered your life. Yeah. So, um, I actually, I think like a lot of people that are my age, um, was, I actually got started on the turtles arcade games. Uh, so Turtles in Time, uh, was one of the first arcade games that I think I ever played. My grandpa had a, had a Turtles in Time machine in his garage. Uh, and so whenever I went to go visit him, I would play a bunch of, a bunch of Turtles in Time and Golden Axe. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I played a bunch of Turtles in Time. And then, you know, as soon as we got an NES, I played the, the sort of NES Turtles, uh, and then, you know, sort of went from there. Um, and I, I, uh, discovered the, the TV show a little bit after that. And I've been a, I've been a Turtles fan ever since. Awesome. So why Turtles to Unmatched? What makes them a good pair? So, uh, Unmatched, like there's, there's a little bit of a story here. Um, and, uh, so we, like I said, we've been doing Unmatched for about five years and, when we decided to do the first unmatched adventures uh, a couple of years ago, um, the system was brought to us by two people who aren't on our team, um, two wonderful people uh, named Darren and Jason. And they designed this whole system and they pitched it to us. And we took it, you know, internally and we said, oh, we think there's something here. And we developed it over the course of the rest of the year. Um, and we put it out and it was wildly successful um you know we, it's one of our best selling unmatched sets especially recently um and so we took it to them and we said hey we think we're going to do another one of these um and we have a whole lot of directions that we can take this so what do you what is exciting to you you know we want to get your opinion the two people who created the unmatched adventure system uh and they said well you know we like this we like that but we really really like turtles we started thinking about it and I was like, man, I really like turtles too. And then Jason, our art director was like, man, I, I love turtles. I could do some turtles. And then, so Justin, who runs the company, um, reached out to Paramount. He said, Hey, we'd really like to do unmatched adventures with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Paramount, who's been excellent to work with, got back to us and they said, yeah, this seems really cool. And so, you know, we sort of started there and we started with this idea of like, who's, who's going to go in the box. Uh, it's got to be the four turtles, you know, are we going to do something weird with the four turtles? And we sort of decided that, like, we really wanted to meet turtles fans. Uh, and we really wanted to appeal to, like, the people both on the surface level and people who get really deep into it. So we said, okay, the four heroes are going to be the four turtles. And we want to get all of these other characters in here. And so, you know, we gave them sidekicks and we got the minions and the bad guys and all of that sort of stuff. So it really, like, it started as us being really big fans of the turtles, you know, across all of their iterations. Uh, and then, you know, sort of, sort of went from there. 
yeah we're going to talk about more about the in-depth of the game too um just for those who are not too familiar with board games um there are a ton of pieces we're going to show everybody here that you know can understand um how long does a game for this usually take to set up and complete and clean up so you can play unmatched adventures in two ways uh the first way is you can play competitively um and a competitive game of unmatched takes 30 to 45 minutes uh, it's incredibly easy to learn. All of the rules are on the back of a card, which I can show here in a little bit. Um, and then you can play cooperatively uh, against Shredder and Krang. Uh, and those games take a little bit longer depending on your player count, but usually don't take longer than about an hour. And that's what I was going to say, because yeah, when an Unmatched first started, I looked this up, it was a competitive mode only. So, I mean, it, it makes perfect sense for the Turtles to actually fit into this realm with a co-op when they're all four brothers. So... Yeah, oh, was that another reason you guys were kind of excited to bring the Turtles franchise to Unmatched since you guys just, I think this uh, cooperative mode just came out this year, right? Was that the first game you guys tried with co-op mode? So uh, the first Unmatched Adventures, Tales to Amaze, came out uh, early last year. Um, yeah, and that was that was all public domain characters. So uh, that one's got, you know, Tesla and Amy Christmas, the Golden Bat, um, and, a, and a sort of pulp character called Jill Trent. Um, and you know, we we put this we we put Unmatched Adventures out there as a way to sort of a new way to play Unmatched because, like I said, it's been out for five years now, and we wanted to find people who wanted to play cooperatively, uh, and so Unmatched Adventures was the answer there. And that's that's my kind of way of playing too. I like uh, another board game, Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid. I like yeah. the games from uh, like Thanos Rising, which is like more of a dice truck where you work with the Marvel heroes. Yeah, I'm always hyped for co-op. It's always nice to work with your buddies instead of, you know, yelling at your buddies. But you get both the best of both <laughs> worlds in this one. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's dive a little more into every character is going to have abilities. So the one that stands out to me is, of course, Raphael, as you guys are passionate characters here. Um, this ability, <laughs> it says here on the Kickstarter pages, if he misses, he comes back harder. So it's like he's got his hot at ability in his... Uh, you know, how to have personality in the ability. So can you explain how these abilities are going to work in the game? Yeah, so uh, Unmatched, the basic Unmatched system is pretty simple. It fits on the back of these character cards. Yeah. So each character comes with their own special ability, um, and all of the rules are here on the back. Uh, Raphael's special ability is that whenever he misses, he gets to attack again once per turn. So he's like, you know, we really wanted to capture Raphael as sort of like, the hot-headed gets frustrated whenever he doesn't get done the thing that he wants to get done, and he just comes back stronger over and over again. Um, and so Raphael is like sort of the the really relentless turtle, um, where you know he's gonna he's gonna keep on attacking, and you know regardless of of sort of how defensive and shelled up the other uh, the other player is, like he's gonna get through. The way it should be exactly. Uh, what we're gonna do here, guys, is we're gonna go ahead and pull up the Kickstarter page here. Um, Wow, congratulations on having over a million dollars pledged. So you got you have a lot of passionate fans. You guys must um so tell us about your uh, unmatched community as I start pulling up this page. It seems like a fantastic group of people if they're backing you by this much and there's still like another I believe eleven days to go. Yeah, it closes October twenty second, two thousand twenty four. Yeah. Um it, we're honestly we're we're very lucky to have the fans that we do. Um and sort of shout outs to the unmatched Discord. Uh, if they're watching it live or if they're watching this later. Um, we have an amazing group of fans um, who are posting, you know, hundreds of messages a day on our Discord. Um, and, uh, you know, we go through a lot of work on uh, both, you know, our adventure sets and on every other set in order to make sure that we're really, like, sort of speaking to those unmatched fans. Um, and at the same time, we put in a lot of work to make sure that, like, you know, the game is accessible to people who are Turtles fans because, you know, we always keep it in the back of our minds that every unmatched set, and I think especially with this one, with, with you know, such a wide fan base that the Turtles have, that this might be the first unmatched set that anyone picks up. And so, you know, we want to make sure that, like, people who are new can sort of pick it up and learn it easily and sort of get into the swing of unmatched. But people who have been playing for five years now have, you know, the option to like pick up a turtle and sort of get really nuanced and in depth with their, with that character and, you know, find something that they love, you know, so we're, we're, we're hoping that we can get turtles fans and sort of unmatched fans to meet in the middle and, uh, and cooperate or buttheads. 
Well, you're definitely going to get me because I also like the simplicity of your Kickstarter. So when we dig dive in a little deeper, you're going to see a couple pledges on the right here, guys. You'll see you can, if you just want to support the uh, game itself, you can do that for as little as a dollar. If you're looking to just consider backing it later, you can go ahead and throw a five. This is again, uh, for those watching, this is American dollars here, USD. But what I like is you guys uh, have a keep it simple, stupid method here. So if you guys just want the game itself, $80 is a very fair price. Uh, you have two options, well, three options. But like you said, you can play versus Shredder, you can play versus Krang, or you can compete against one another. And then this is the really juicy part. You know, again, you're a Turtle fan as well, Brian. So when you now, how many Turtle toys did you have growing up? Oh God, I had so many. My favorite when I was a kid was I had one of the 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 pizza flinger. Oh yes, where it would shoot where it would shoot the little pizza discs yes. out. I love that thing. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So us turtle fans here, if if we see something, we want to get everything. So um, this is another cool thing here too. Uh, can you explain more on this uh, for us backers here? We uh, I'm going to be backing it before the thing comes to an end, but it's free for backers alternate art pack, um, and we get a new card. At, now, did you guys expect to get this big turn on here? And um, I don't want to put you on the spot here, Brian, but it says here for every 25K pledge to this goal, we're going to get another card. So I'm going to scroll up top again. This has over a million dollars pledged. So you guys are going to have a lot of work to do with these extra cards. Um, were you expecting this big of a turnout? I mean, you know, we... we... This is awesome. We always we always have to be prepared for success, um, you know, and I think that there's there's a lot of smart people who are uh, who are sort of behind the scenes crunching numbers for us. Um, and, you know, they they decided this twenty five thousand dollars was the right number. And they said, you know, we're we've we've got enough art to do it. So this is what we're going to do. And, you know, we're really excited about the alternate art pack. Um, you know, the, the the first thing that's up there is uh, we decided really early on when this was going to be a Kickstarter that we wanted to get some Eastman art in the game. And so, you know, one of our first emails was to Eastman and his agents. And, you know, we said, hey, we're doing this thing. We'd really love to have like a piece of Turtles history inside of this Kickstarter. And, you know, they sent us an email back almost immediately. And they said, yeah, we have these pictures that you know, Kevin just colored. They've never before been released in color. Um, you know, is this a thing that you'd like to use? And we all got so excited uh, about, you know, being able to, like, you know, use Eastman's art and put his signature on these things. And so um, that's the first thing that we revealed was uh, the Kevin Eastman art that is that's there on the front page of the Kickstarter. But then as well, you know, Sorry, go ahead. No, just to confirm, now, this says for any backer here, right? So if they don't have to get the $225 option, if they just want to get the $80, they're going to get the cards here? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody, every every single backer who gets a game will get that pack of alternate art cards. Um, yeah, and I mean, you know, we, we were lucky that we've worked with so many different artists. Um, and so we sent an email out to a lot of our artists who have done previous unmatched sets for us as well as a bunch of like turtles comics artists uh and you know we got so many people who were so excited to work on turtles um you know that we ended up having a bunch of you know uh tmnt artists and unmatched artists just sort of pour in you know passion to all of these different art cards um and as well, like I said, Paramount's been wonderful to work with. And so they gave us access to their vault. So we've been, you know, we've been able to use previous, you know, Turtles art from the video game. We've got some Turtles in Time uh, alternate art stuff in there. We've got stuff from the, you know, the 1988 cartoon. We've got stuff from the 2003 cartoon. You know, all that sort of stuff um, is in that alternate art pack. And, you know, we're just, like I said, we're really excited to bring that to the fans. Not only do we get that, I'm looking down here, we also get free foil cards, too. I mean, this is, man, you guys certainly give to your community here, Bob, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we've got a lot of collectors in our unmatched community who, uh, you know, like the like the alternate art, and they like to bling out their sets and that sort of stuff. And so, you know, it's always really important to us to, to sort of meet our fans where they're at. Um, and this is the stuff that they said, you know, this is really important to us. And we wanted to make sure that all of that stuff got into the campaign as well. 
Now we're scrolling down here. Now it looks like everybody's gonna have. Now is this how most uh, unmatched games work here, Brian? Where everyone gets almost like a companion. I'm on the Turtles versus Villains, and it looks like Mikey gets April, Rap gets Casey, Donnie gets Metalhead, and Leo gets Splinter. So can you explain what the like the buddies do in this uh, game here for them? Yeah. So uh, everyone, like I said, gets their gets their own little character card um, like this, and some characters, most characters, have sidekicks. Uh, and the sidekicks are helper characters that um, you can use to sort of strategically move around the map. Um, so Leo is going to have a deck of cards, and some of those cards are going to say Leonardo on them, and some of those cards are going to say Splinter on them, and some of them are going to say any, which means both characters can use them. And so Splinter gets his own moments, you know, whenever he is sort of moving around the map that he gets to sort of have his own personality in the game. And it's a really cool way to sort of show off, you know, b both these characters, but also their interactions and sort of how they help each other. Um, and so Splinter, you know, gets some cards where he's going to help Leo accomplish his goal, and Leo gets cards where he can sort of move Splinter around the map to tactically position. Um, Leo's, Leo's sort of gig is that he gets to move people around the map and make sure everyone's in position to sort of execute the plan. And who came up with the ideas of the, the sculpts too? Mikey's got his skateboard, so I'm a fan of how you guys treat my man. I, I was, um, I'm a passionate Mikey fan, so I always get a little, you know, upset when uh, he's not done right. Uh, you know, Michael Bay movies, but most of the time they get him right. <laughs> um, you guys got Raphael. Looks like he's got his grit. I do enjoy Donatello's look as well. He's got the. Oh, it looks like it's a boombox down below. He's got the old school '80s boombox. Yep, yep. He's uh, he's 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 got his boombox that he's sitting next to, um, and he's got his big bow staff. You know, I'm I'm a Donatello's my favorite turtle, so got to make sure he's you know taken care of. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like Le and Leonardo almost looks like uh, paying homage to the old cartoon uh, theme song where Leonardo leads. He's got his sort of almost like the cartoon open there. I love that touch. Yeah. Now here, oh here we go. Now we have Shredder and Krang. Oh wow, these guys look. Krang looks ginormous too. Fantastic job on the artwork here. And it looks like uh, Krang's even a little bit more uh, paint. So I noticed the turtles aren't painted, but uh, what made you guys decide to make sure you had Krang as a pink blob in there? Uh, you know, it's it's like we we always want to make the villains in these unmatched sets look, you know, but we want to differentiate the villains, I think is is sort of the 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 tactical reason for it. You always want to make sure you know where the villain is on the map. Um, but also, you you can't do Krang without the pink brain, right? Yeah. Like, he's always got to be his little guy inside of his robot suit. And so we really wanted to bring out that detail. And, um, you know, one of the ways that we can do that is through color. Uh, and so, like like you said, every, everybody gets a mini. All of them are very high-quality components. Um, and uh, they all get a wash applied to them that's, that's sort of rendered out here that brings out those details. Um, but we know that, like, uh, at least... We've we've heard from a lot of our fans that they really enjoy painting these, you know, minis and sort of expressing themselves through painting. So we wanted to make sure that all of these are fully paintable. Um, and so, you know, if you want to go in and throw a coat of paint on your shredder to make him, you know, whichever version of shredder you want, whether it's, you know, the 88 or the 03 or some of the shredders from the uh, um, from the comic books, you know, that's all that's all doable as well. I know a lot of, and especially with uh, these figures, that, that painting does sound pretty cool. I've, I've never considered it, but that actually seems like a great idea to make these pieces even more, you know, exciting for gameplay. Because again, these pieces are what you need to come to life. All right, so here we go. Well done on choosing minions here. So what made you guys, uh, yes, Bebop and Rocksteady should be together. I'm I'm, I'm all for that. Uh, props to you, uh, whoever came up with the Leatherhead design. I am uh, I grew up with the Fred Wolf cartoon, and I'm always a little bit more... Uh, excited when i see leatherhead with his red hat there's a couple figures that have that and some don't because again 2003 he doesn't and the fred wolf one you know he was more a chill leatherhead so i uh props on that uh what made you choose these six uh for minions so we we had the three that we knew we had to have which was bebop and rocksteady and baxter stockman and originally when we started out bebop and rocksteady were sort of different characters um, and they, you know, they, we, we had a bunch of, uh, sort of design conversations about, you know, how they were going to work and how they were going to function. And they always ended up being, I think, like a little bit too clever for Bebop and Rocksteady. Um, cause Bebop and Rocksteady are sort of your, your, like your consummate minions, right? Where they're like, oh, we'll get it done. And then they sort of go and they bumble around. <laughs> um, 
And so, you know, we, we eventually decided that Bebop and Rocksteady had to be together. And, you know, we wanted to make them sort of the, the straightforward minions that everybody was going to play with right at the beginning. Um, Baxter Stockman, I think, is another just iconic Turtles villain. Um, and, you know, so he had to be in there. And then we ended up having to uh, sort of pick the other four slots. And there were so many good characters that we could work with um that we sort of turned to the turtles fans internally in our team and we said you know give us give us like a hook for these things what what do we think is cool that these characters can do um and so we chose the four characters that we thought had like the coolest hooks for them um you know leatherhead the sort of you know you know raging cajun mutate that is that is sort of in the in the swamps uh absolutely incredible he was in there really early. Um, Slash was another one that uh, I think like is a really good sort of medium cut for a lot of Turtles fans. And then you know Rat King and Wingnut were the ones where we decided we wanted to go a little deeper and we wanted to sort of show off our we wanted we wanted to flex our our, uh, our Turtles knowledge a little bit when we got both of those characters in. Well done. And oh, wait, we're not done yet here, guys. Now it says here kick it up a notch with allies and henchmen. So again, this is all going to come in the. Uh... Next tier, we'll talk about a little bit more. But now we have Coca from the Turtles Secret of the Ooze movie. We have General Track, who's another favorite character of mine. I'm very excited to see him in a board game. It also looks like we have Hun from the 2003 uh, series. The yep. Neutrinos are actually making, I, be, I could be wrong, but this might be their debut in a board game. And then you have Mondo Gecko, who just came out in the Shredder's Revenge DLC. So it's good to see him appearing in two uh, Turtle games in uh, 2024 and Karai. So... What made you guys expand even more for this game? Well, you know, like like I said, there were so were many not. of those characters that yeah. we that we felt like we had to get in. Um, and uh, you know, when we went through, we did all of the minions, and you know, we were like, oh, this this isn't this isn't enough. We have to we have to dig deeper, and we have to get all of these characters in here. And so, um, Alice and Henchmen is something that didn't appear in the original Unmatched Adventures. And so it's a totally new system that we designed just so that we could get all of these new characters in here. Um, so we really wanted to make sure that, you know, the Turtles fans got to see all of these cool characters that they sort of grew up with and, you know, even even some recent additions. Um, we really wanted to make sure that we got those in there. And so we designed a whole new system to make sure that we could include more Turtles characters in the game. I'm just going to read this out in case anybody does listen to this on Spotify, because you guys heard Toka, and I'm sure everybody, it's like peanut butter jelly. It's like, well, wait, where's Razor? So I'm going to read you guys the full list right here. So for allies, we have Neutrinos, Mondo Gecko, Karai, Genghis Frog, Mona Lisa, Ace Duck, Muckman and Joe Eyeball, and Irma. And then for the henchmen, you have Toka, Razor, Hun, Mutagen Man, General Trag, and Granitor, so you have them both, Pizza yep. Monsters, and Triceraton. So can you just uh, play... Uh, I hope you don't mind playing spoiler. What is Irma's ability? I'm just very curious because I think this is a, another interesting character to be in a game. The other thing that was as silly is um, there's a fan-made game called Rescue Palooza that actually has Vernon as a playable character. So I'm <laughs> curious to hear what you guys have for Irma lined up for us. Yeah, so the the uh, allies and henchmen, um, the way that they work in the game is they're like they're sort of supporting characters. They'll they'll pop up. They'll do a really quick thing, and then you know they'll sort of fade into the background a little bit. Um, you'll have to give me a second to to look up sort of what Irma does here. Um, Irma is is sort of an informant, right? Um, so Irma helps gather information about what the villains are about to do, um, and so she lets you sort of peek at some of their cards and see sort of what's coming up next. Um, and so she's not really a direct combatant. She doesn't get into combat, but she does sort of help spy on some of the uh, on on some of the villains and bad guys. Like somebody who's a good doing a good job at Channel Six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm actually, and this is my first time actually seeing an unmatched mm-hmm. playmat. So this playmat here it looks like it's uh, quite simple to figure out, like you said earlier, which I'm excited for. It's not too complicated. Um, do the like it looks like there's a couple colors and stuff. Does that matter? Like where you're in? Is there like enemy terrain or something like that in regards to like the big map? Yeah. So uh, this is a system that we've used in in every unmatched game. Um, if there are different colored zones. Okay. Uh, and those zones are are how you figure out uh, range. 
And okay. so if you're in the same color as, you know, another fighter, you're in the same zone as them, you can do ranged attacks on them. Um, most of the turtles are melee, but they have some, some ranged sidekicks. Um, and, you know, also, like, there's a lot of effects in the game that say everything in this zone or everything like that. Um, and so, like, really, when we first started out, we were trying to figure out how we were going to do, like, line of sight rules and, and all of this, like, really crunchy sort of tactical war game stuff. And we decided that um, we were going to do this sort of colored zone system to make it a little bit easier to understand. So now you don't have to figure out if there's a wall in the way or, you know, if you can see another character. Everything is on the zones, and you can always just check, am I in the same zone as another person? Cool, that means I can see. I, I like the simplicity of that. So let me just, oh, we still have more we have to cover. Dude, my goodness, what a phenomenal <laughs> deal here, Brian. I, as a turtle fan, I am ultra hyped. So we have the minis. I'm looking at, we have the sidekick tokens, action cards. Foot soldier tokens, too, because that's going to be more minion related, which is great. Um, another cool thing I saw, too, is it looks like, I'm guessing this is uh, input from the fans here. So as an add-on, you can actually have Shredder and Krang be the heroes for once? Yeah, you can. Uh, this is this is from the uh, from our previous Kickstarter, or from our previous uh, Unmatched Adventures. Um, you were fighting against Mothman and the Martians, and we had so many people that came out, and they said, I just want to play as Mothman. Um, and so, you know, we, we decided in this one that, uh, we, we needed people who were going to be able to, we, we knew we were going to want, people were wa going to want to play as Shredder, um, cause he's such a cool character, right? Um, and we knew we were going to have people who were going to want to play as Krang. And so we included two decks, uh, to, to, so that you can, you know, sort of pick them up and play them both in cooperative and competitive. Uh, you can play them against each other. You can play... You know, Krang is a hero against Shredder is a villain. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, make sure that we, we sort of get that in there for people. I love the uh, artwork, too, on Krang right here. It just looks like the cartoon. <laughs> of, he's got his little curious <laughs> smile on this. So well done. Uh, let's see here. So extra topping. Oh, so we actually have, oh, my God. We actually can get the Bubble Walker Krang here, too? Yep. Yep. We got a, we got a Bubble Walker Krang in there, um, so as well as Super Shredder. Oh my um, goodness. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I, I think that like I, I was I was really excited about this because yeah. you know I'm I'm a I'm a game designer and I was really excited about this from like a you know mechanical perspective. What can we do with all of these heroes and how can we make them different and cool and all of that sort of stuff? And Jason, who is our other Turtles fan, is our art director, and he was just, you know, both feet in the pool in on how can we make you know, as much cool stuff for the fans as we could. Um, and so I think that, you know, he did a really great job of, you know, doing a lot of creative direction around what makes each of these characters so cool. And especially for Shredder and Krang, there was too much that made them cool to fit them in one mini. So we had to make a second mini so that we could have sort of the Bubble Walker Krang and the Super Shredder. Uh, and, you know, that, that Bubble Walker top will pop off. You can take the brain out. Oh, no you know, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so no wonder why he's got that, the, again, the, the color on him to stand out. Oh, my goodness. This is fantastic. Yeah. And there's Leatherhead with his hat. I'm, I'm looking down more, too. Be oh, Bebop and Rocks, they look like a phenomenal duo piece. You also yeah. have the, uh, so instead of using the tokens, it looks like for your heroes, you can actually, it looks like you also can get almost a, a bonus mini of the uh, allies here. I see a Casey Jones ally. I see Metalhead. Um, now, do you do these kind of uh, t uh, bonuses with other sets, too, or is this something special for the Turtles with, like, these uh, so allies? This is the first time that we've done it. Um, this is the first time that we've done the sidekick minis. Um, you know, I think we, uh, we again, just had too much cool stuff to try and sort of fit onto a normal sidekick token. And so we wanted this as a little add-on for people who really, really wanted to sort of see their cool stuff, for people who wanted to paint their minis and sort of have their Casey Jones and their Splinter and their April O'Neil on the table. I think so. I think we actually it looks like we covered just about. Oh man, look at those dice you get. So again, you can get like bonus tokens here. Oh my, wait. So if if again for this big bopper, I'm scrolling. Up, those are, are those little foot soldier minions that you can get too as well. Um, yeah. So in the in the eighty dollar base game, those are just plastic tokens. Okay. Um, and you put them on the board. They represent the foot soldiers sort of trying to take over New York. Um, but in this upgrade pack, we replace them with uh, miniatures so that you can actually 
get some verticality on sort of how how taken over is New York City by Shredder. Oh my god! All right, so for those listening who are planning on buying this, and like Brian said, a lot of uh, fans are going to be painting these. Uh, please tag me at King Mike this or Shellonomics because I really want to see somebody paint these purple foot soldiers. I think they're going to look so awesome on a board just to have a colossal amount of foot soldiers wreaking havoc in New York. So I hope somebody yeah, I mean, is going to paint all those guys purple. We we have some we have some truly incredible painters in our community. It's it's it baffles me every single time that they put up you know a, a painting of the genie or a painting of Spider Man. You know, in, and and it's just it's just incredible the the thing that some people can do with like paints on these minis. Oh, so now you get a nice playing mat. Now I've used this for a couple board games at Sellies too. These play mats are always nice. Um, wow, yeah, Shredder and King Hero Index. I, oh, you even get sleeves. Wow, yep. I didn't see that anywhere else. And uh, another thing too, real quick. Good job having Screw Loose. You know, I'm a passionate turtle guy. I only saw Wingnut earlier, but I do see Wingnut comes with Screw Loose. So again, just yep. passionate turtle fans here, guys, making this game for us. A collector coin too. Oh my god! Yeah, the alternate art cards. This is incredible. So, if you were, um, you know, what what would you tell turtle fans why they need this game? So, you know, I think I think you've done a really good job, sort of sort of hyping us up, and I really appreciate that. Um, we are we are turtles fans. Uh, we have so many people on our team who who love these characters and you know love uh, the the sort of setting of the turtles and the story that they tell. Um, And so we're really proud of this. And I think that we've done a really good job communicating, you know, what the turtles are and how cool they are in this board game. We really hope that like, whenever you're playing Leonardo, you feel like you're leading a team. Whenever you're playing Raphael, you feel like, you know, you're this powerhouse turtle. And, you know, I think that we've done a really good job both through the art and through the mechanics of the game, really getting to sort of embody and play as the turtles. Um, and I think that's true both in, you know, cooperative and in competitive modes. Um, so I think that, you know, you're going to find that whenever you're playing Donatello, you know, whether or not you're playing against Shredder and Krang or just against one of the other heroes, um, that you're going to feel like you're laying a plan down and then executing it. You're going to feel like you got all these gadgets and cool stuff that you can sort of pull out of your pocket. Um, so I hope, you know, I hope the Turtles fans can can see the love and the care that we put into this and also, you know, once they get their hands on it, can see how cool it is to sort of be a turtle and 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 see what that looks like. And I'm not going to play spoiler. You guys are going to have to do this after the show, whether you're watching this on Twitch, listening on YouTube, or Spotify. You'll notice if you are watching the video, I have my uh, finger right over a play button. I want you guys to check out that trailer because the voice acting that you guys did, you don't have to tell who did it, but those were some awesome Shredder and Krang voice. I felt like I was watching the old cartoon. So you guys did a phenomenal job with the trailer on there too. I don't know who came up with that idea for a pitch, but well done there as well, guys. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, So just two more things here, guys, before we bring this in for a landing. Another cool bonus feature I looked into with this game is... You can actually mix and match this with other unmatched um, pieces. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have uh, about 25 other unmatched sets that are out in the wild right now. Um, and they range from, you know, other licensed sets. So we've got some Marvel sets where you can play as, you know, Spider-Man or Daredevil, uh, Black Widow, She-Hulk, that sort of thing. Um and you know we've got jurassic park so we've got a giant t-rex you can have the turtles play against a t-rex if you want to um as well we've got a lot of public domain sets so we've got alice in wonderland and king arthur um we have harry houdini we have a whole set that is based around shakespeare that's what i've got out in front of me right now so like you can play as shakespeare against the turtles um and that's always sort of been the uh the the sort of aspiration of unmatched is you, there's there's always been arguments you know on the internet about you know who would win is it bruce lee or is it a t-rex and you know you can you can put them both down on a map you can play them against each other and you can find out and the turtles are going to be in there too um so you know we're really excited that uh that that everybody gets to sort of see that matchup um and as well all of that works cooperatively as well so if you want to see you know how well Doctor Strange, Leonardo, and Bruce Lee would do against the Shredder. You know, you can you can see that as well. 
So you're telling me, so we were blessed as Turtle fans to get a animated uh, movie and comic Batman vs. Turtles, but now we can actually dive into the Marvel side of town and have Spider-Man take on the Shredder. And for, again, passionate fans who grew up with the original cartoon, we can remake our own episode with Turtles at the Earth's Core. Do you remember that episode where they actually had dinosaurs? So you can actually bring that to life with the Jurassic Park edition, too. Yeah, that's true. You can do uh, you can do T Rex or the Raptors. So oh, okay. that is unbelievable. So Brian, where can uh, some fans here follow you guys uh, at the Kickstarter page, and where else can they find you? Yeah, so um, you can follow us on the Kickstarter page, like you said. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Restoration Game. Um, you can also follow us on Facebook, uh, on Instagram, all of those socials. Um, we've got stuff out, or you can check out our website at RestorationGames.com. Um, if you want to sort of dip your toe into some unmatched before this comes out, we've got um, a bunch of unmatched available on our shop. Um, we've got $10 flat rate shipping to anywhere in the United States and Canada. Um, and so, you know, you can sort of dip your toes in and learn the game before, uh, before you dive in with Turtles. Gosh, and this is the one thing I like because a lot of games nowadays, since I'm more of a retro gamer, the replay value is always low because once you beat the game, you don't want to go back. But this, you get to fight Shredder. Or Krang, you can compete against your friends. You can play with all these other pretty much unending battles. So the, the replay value in this is a very, very high, which I'm excited to know about. And um, so, Brian, before we let you go, since you are a big Turtle fan, as we sign off here, what is your favorite Master Splinter quote? Oh, my favorite Master Splinter quote. Um, oh, that's a good one. Uh, I, think, I think my favorite one, it was from when I was a kid, and I always thought this was, uh, this was so wise. Um, it was uh, from the old Fred Wolf cartoon, and uh, Master Splinter says, um, it's not how heavy the responsibility is, it's whether or not you can carry it. I like that one. That's a good one to go out on. Yeah. Brian, I really appreciate your time. Congratulations on not only breaking the Kickstarter uh, basic goal in an hour, but to also have over a million dollars pledged, still going strong. Uh, I look forward to playing this game, and uh, thank you so much for your time, man. Greatly appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, Brian. Take care. Cheers.